Hey guys, so you probably came to this video because you're curious about why these props are so special. What makes the Ethics S3, S4, and S5 special according to every other prop on the market? Why would I fly them? Oh, it's because Steel is sponsored by HQ and that's the only prop that, you know, he gets and he uses it because he gets it for free and will it? No, okay? There's plenty of reasons why I use HQ props and I'm going to go into a little bit of detail of my relationship with HQ Prop and also how the Ethics S3, which was the first iteration and honestly the best prop I'd ever flown, especially considering I had been flying polycarbonate props for the last three years and I went from glass nylon, which I'll talk about here in a second, which was actually the best flying props I've ever used in, in the ever. Those are the best flying props, but they have some downsides where the polycarbonate props, especially this S3, kind of took, adva took advantage of this weird material that's extremely durable uh, and also stiff at the same time. So let's go into a little bit of a history lesson on you know, props in general, especially when mini quads first started coming onto the market. So around 2014 is when I started flying. I think it was July uh, of 2014. I got a toy for Christmas in 2013 and kind of started flying collective fit helicopters and then got into drones around August or uh, sorry, May. Uh, and then got into you know flying really hardcore starting around June, July of 2014. Um, and back then there were a couple manufacturers that made propellers, one of them being Gemfan, and then there was also another one that had just popped up called HQ. Um, basically they were making very similar propellers at the time, if not the exact same propellers, except HQ was a little bit more expensive and a little bit higher quality as far as how well they were balanced and then just the mold in general was better. Uh, Jim Fan would use molds that were, you know, a little bit older and the props would come out, but they were extremely cheap. So people ended up buying Jim Fan a lot more because they were a lot cheaper. So the material that they were using back then was called glass nylon. And the reason they didn't just use nylon, which some props were actually made out of just straight nylon, um, is because nylon is extremely flexible but it's not very stiff. So when you're talking about a mini quad prop, you got a lot of RPM and it's going up and down in RPM extremely quickly um, and you need it to be stiff, otherwise it's going to deflect and then uh, I think cavitate is the term, makes an extremely odd noise and takes away from flight characteristics and becomes extremely, extremely inefficient when it starts to cavitate. Um, but the prop basically starts to bend and it's not good. You want a stiff propeller, but you don't want it to be too stiff. They've tried carbon fiber and it just didn't work out. Um, so you want it to have some flex, but you don't want it to have too much flex. And polycarbonate wasn't there yet. So glass nylon was the go-to material because it was lightweight, it was cheap to make, it was stiff, and it was just a really good material to use. However, the downside of glass nylon was if you touched anything, it exploded. Um, there was no such thing as turtle mode, not because it was impossible to do, but because the propellers just didn't justify having that feature. If you crashed, you were going to lose a propeller and you were having to go walk and get the quad. There was just no way if you flip the quad back over, you weren't actually going to be able to take off because you were missing propellers. Um, you were burning up motors and whatnot. So polycarbonate wasn't around yet. Glass nylon was the go-to material. Now, when I started flying, I used Jim Fan 5x3s, okay? That was 5-inch pitch prop by blade with a 3-inch pitch uh, propeller. And we were using 3S uh, on, you know, like 2300 kV motors on quads that weighed like 600-700 grams. Uh, and it, it was just super, super underpowered. And then people started putting 4S on it, and everyone switched to 4S, and 4S became the new standard. And the three inch pitch prop kind of kept it to where the amp draw wasn't too crazy. And then people started running four inch pitch prop on a bi blade. And then there was like 4.5 inch bullnose props. And there was a lot of change in that first couple years with honestly the first couple of six months uh, or first six months, there was a lot of change in propellers of people trying new things, trying to get more speed, trying to get better flight characteristics because I'll go into a little bit of a history lesson, especially in mini quads. This is not actually history, it's more physics. Um, these things turn side to side, right? You would assume, you know, with a, a mini quad, if you want to go this way, these props spin up and these slow down. If you want to go this way, these spin up and these slow down. Same vice versa, front and back. The front spin up to go back and the rear spin up to go forward. Well, how does yaw actually happen? Well, to get a yaw effect, you actually spin these up and you slow these down, and the inertia of the motor and the propeller causes the aircraft to yaw to the side and side to side. So, 
With that being said, there was not a lot of regenerative braking back then, if any at all. Uh, we're dealing with like ESCs that were put made for planes that were, you know, we're putting flashing shit on and trying to get them Simon K, trying to get it all crazy that it would fly well. We didn't have a lot of regenerative braking, so we relied a lot on the actual prop itself and how much drag it had and also how much mass it had. So if you had a heavier propeller and you sped it up or slowed it down, it had a lot more mass, so it created a little bit more of a better yaw sensation. So a heavier prop gave you better yaw, but a heavier prop also gave you a slower spool up and spool down time because it had so much inertia, so it took away from flight characteristics. So it was a, a sweet spot between having a nicely light prop to give you that nice sweet uh, you know, up and down spool time, but then a heavy prop to give you a good yaw feel. Okay, well, Around 2015 Drone Nationals, uh, you know, I went there flying HQ 5x4s, and these were bi-blades at the time, and I had never really wanted to fly the tri-blade, mainly because they were expensive. I had spent probably two to three hundred dollars a month up until this point, the first six months or so, flying drones, because I was using glass nylon props, and that was really all that was available, um, and it was just something that I was used to spending. I, it was a cheap hobby compared to building cars and flying or just doing anything, having a girlfriend, all of this stuff was way more expensive than spending a couple hundred dollars a month, you know, on props that were, I was exponentially getting way more fun out of it than $300 worth. So I was, I was happy. I was content. Um, and up until that point at Drone Nationals, I had not wanted to fly tri-blades. And the main factor was because if you crashed, you were more likely to break a blade off where if you had a bi blade, it was a 50-50 chance when you hit the ground whether you broke a blade. And I actually got lucky a lot, and I'd crash and tumble and not break a prop and end up being able to take off, where when you have a tri blade, you would always break one. And I had tried them before and was just like, eh, the flight performance doesn't justify the fact that I'm going to break a propeller if I crash and I'm going to have to go get my quad. And they're also really expensive. These propellers were $3.99 for a pack of four. So it was a dollar per prop and they didn't last there. I mean, people were just blowing through them like it was nothing, like it was just water, just dumping them, dumping money down the drain because these things were so expensive and so fragile. So up until this point, I had not wanted to fly tri-blades. I'm at Drone Nationals, a buddy of mine, Sean Harlan, actually, um, you know, he's the one that like hooked me up with Cobra Motors and all this crazy stuff. He's a good friend of mine back then. He's still a good guy. And uh, he actually still flies mini quads too. His name's All Wheel Drive Quads. Yeah, I don't know why, but if you're curious, check him out. And um, he put some of these on my quad. He had been talking about them for a while, but he was running lower KV motors. And I was like, dude, why'd you put those on there? I got to go race. And I like literally had a quad that I had just rebuilt because I had a KISS 18 amp fire earlier that day when, it, when I landed in some dewy grass. And then he'd put these props on my quad I'd never flown before, and I went and had a race. And I ended up getting first in qualifying on that, that race. I was doing 19 second laps where the rest of the world was doing 21 second laps or the rest of the people there. So I had beaten everyone by two seconds and I was first in like the Drone Nationals time trials on a track that you know most people were doing in 23 to 24 seconds. The fast guys were doing them in 21 and I did a 19 second lap um, and I had flo never flown this quad before. And I was extremely like, surprised at how well these things flew and I fell in love with tri-blades at that point. I kind of went over to Chad Noack at the time who was flying a uh, bullnose like 5 by 5 by 4.5 inch props. So bullnose meaning they literally cut the ends off the props and get a lot more surface area but you don't have as much efficiency but it gives you a lot of speed and the heavier prop gives you more yaw authority. So he was super psyched on his yaw flicks at the time. Um, and I got him to try these, you know, we were really good friends and I got him to try these and he fell in love with them too. And we just kind of, you know, this prop was so light, it weighed like 3.3 grams. Um, it had so much thrust cause you had that extra surface area from that extra blade. It had the, the yaw authority you wanted because it had the extra drag from the extra blade. It had the speed that you wanted and also the maneuverability. So this is when like tri blades became a thing. So uh, Chad and I started using them, then Tommy started using them, then Carlos started using them, then everybody started using tri-blades. I know there were people that had used them before, but this is around the time that it just took off and spread like wildfire, and everyone was using tri-blades at that point. Um, and this prop was like the go-to prop. So this is the HQ 5x4x3, by by and it's glass nylon. And the reason glass nylon sucks is because it just explodes. And the, these age like wine, so they don't break like they used to. But as soon as it breaks it just falls off and you don't have a prop anymore. So 
polycarbonate started coming out, doll props specifically, uh, a few years, or like a year later, and they were extremely malleable. You could crash them, and they wouldn't they wouldn't break. You could like be in a race, crash, tumble three times, pick back up, and you'd be good. Uh, now that was obviously super advantageous for freestyle, I mean for racing pilots, but for freestyle there was like a give and take, like you lost flight, perform flight performance, but you gained the ability to be able to crash more, and my mentality was, you know, I like the flight performance and I'd rather just not crash as much, so I stuck with the glass nylon, and really there was not up until the point, or there was no props that even gained my attention whatsoever up until the point when Chad and uh, Zong came up with the V1S which was the supposedly the replacement for this prop, which was the glass nylon 5x4 HQ. Um, and the glass or the polycarbonate V1S prop was a lot heavier. It was like 3.9 grams, but it kind of had a similar flight performance and flight characteristics. Even though it was a little heavier, the regenerative braking was getting better at the time, and it just it wasn't that big of a deal. So I started flying polycarbonate and kind of got used to the fact that you could crash. And then turtle mode came out. And it was just like this, you know, thing where you could crash and you could get back up and you could keep going. And ever since the day that I flew these and then I saw that people were having advantages with polycarbonate, I always would ask Zong, hey, can you try to make one of these in polycarbonate? I mean, in a, yeah, in polycarbonate. And he was like, it's impossible. You're never going to get that light with polycarbonate. The material is just too soft. It just isn't going to work. And it literally took two years, probably 10 different prototypes, and me continuously asking for it and poking and saying, hey, make this, make this, please, please, make this, make this, make this, until the S3. I got, I got a couple prototypes in the mail previous to this, and then he was like, I think I've done it. And he sent me a picture of one, and I was like, oh, what does it weigh? And he's like, 3.5 grams. It's stiff. It's durable. And I think you're really going to like it. He sent it to me. I freaking loved it immediately like I flew it probably five maybe five packs and I was like this is it I mean I knew on the first pack but I just wanted to make sure it was as durable as he said it was I I was immediately enthralled with the fact of how good this propeller was considering it was better than the V1S that I was flying at the time it was better balanced it was lighter it had better flight characteristics as far as spool up and spool down time it had just overall the less pitch gave me a little bit more consistency in my throttle management there was just so much about it that i loved and that's kind of how the s3 came about was you know me asking and asking and asking and asking to replicate this propeller which was ultimately my favorite propeller ever um, but you know obviously there's it comes to a point where you don't want to just touch a piece of branch and explode and fall out of the sky so polycarbonate has its upsides but you know it took that long for this material and the design to come out and be like something that could be mass produced and also you know well balanced from the mold because that was another problem with polycarbonate was the fact that they were hu usually very like very out of balance there was a lot of batches of v1s props at back in the day that were like one batch would be perfect and then one, bat one batch would be out of balance and you'd be like what the heck's going on and it would just be that the mold had an inconsistency in it and it just it just didn't work well all of that stuff was solved with this prop and I just freaking loved it and that's how that prop came about and then obviously if you watched my other video then you know how these props came about because this prop worked well in the environment that I set it up for but then when I started changing environments and changing applications making the quad heavier or changing altitude air density all of these things started affecting it but you kind of get the idea of why these props are so special because they are extremely light and they do perform in many ways not only flight characteristics, yaw, yaw performance, and also durability. So anyway, anyways, that was kind of my mentality of why this prop is so special and why it's the prop that I've been flying for so long now is because it's the prop that I've been wanting since day one and it's finally here and obviously it's everything that I've ever wanted. Obviously if there's something comes out that could be better, but you know, right now, this is the prop that I had asked for since day one and I've got it. So, the S3. That's why it's my preferred prop. And that's a little bit of history in the prop world. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And um, if you want to know about the applications of these propellers, you can check out the other video um, that I made about the FX S3, S4, and S5 propellers and their application of why you might use them. Uh, stay safe, stay quarantined, and I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.